Hey guys, how are you going? Sam here from Core Electronics and today we're going to be taking a look at how to cool your Raspberry Pi. Now, well, what do we need to cool our Raspberry Pi? It's a good question. You might think that, you know, surely a device should uh, run, you know, as it, as, as it is and it should run without any issues and that's partly true. But with computers there's a whole bunch of different factors to take into account. For example, it depends on how much, uh, you know, how, how many applications you're running, how much RAM is being used, uh, how intensively your processor is being, uh, you know, is being used and how much energy it's drawing. All that kind of stuff comes into play. Now you might have noticed if you plug your Raspberry Pi in under usual, uh, you know, normal use, the main system on chip just there, it does get a little warm but not out of the ordinary. However, if you're doing really intense uh, applications, such as perhaps running a RetroPie setup or watching a lot of HD video, you'll notice that it starts to really heat up. And it's not too much of an issue, except that with processors, the performance can actually start going downhill and this system can uh, become more unstable uh, the hotter the chip gets. So we want to cool our Raspberry Pi if we're going to be using it for any serious work. Um, the other reason is, this is the first in a three-part series where we look at cooling, stress testing, and overclocking the Raspberry Pi. And we'll get to stress testing in the next video and overclocking a little bit later. Uh, but when we're doing that, if we want to really put our Raspberry Pi through the paces, it's going to generate a lot of heat because it's going running at its maximum potential and we need to cool it down. Likewise, if you're overclocking it, uh, you're running the Pi uh, you know, faster and in, in a greater capacity than it's normally used to. So you need to make sure you can keep those chips cool, otherwise it's going to become unstable, crash and shut down, which isn't what you want. So what are we cooling? Well, there's three main chips on the Raspberry Pi board. There is the system on chip here, which is the main one. It contains the CPU, the GPU, and all the other related peripherals. Uh, here we've got the Ethernet and USB bus controller. And then on the back side, we've got the SD RAM chip. It's pretty cool. Now, a mistake that a lot of people make is thinking they need to cool all of those. And indeed, a lot of Raspberry Pi heatsink kits will come with one larger heatsink and two smaller heatsinks for cooling every chip, but it's not quite true. You see, whilst in the original Raspberry Pi design, there was an electrical design element which caused the Ethernet and USB uh, bus chip to heat up quite a lot, and that was why people needed to cool it. However, that was fixed in a later revision of the board, and now it's no longer an issue. So, the main chip we really need to focus on cooling is the system on chip, the main Broadcom uh, BC28370 if you're using a Raspberry Pi 3. And we'll be using a Raspberry Pi 3 for most of this tutorial, however it's still relevant to the other Raspberry Pi models as well. Um, you'll notice here I've got quite a large heatsink on this one. The larger the heatsink, the more heat it can dissipate, however I've also got a heatsink mounted on the SD RAM chip and that's because uh, as we'll find out in a later tutorial I was overclocking the SD RAM as well and so I wanted to make sure that was running nice and cool. So how do we go about cooling it? Heat sinks, fans, some people prefer to water cooling, what's the go? Well, first of all, let's get it aside that you do not, you do not need to water cool or liquid nitrogen cool or any other exotic form of cooling need to cool your Raspberry Pi under anything but the most ridiculous extreme usage. A heat sink and a fan is going to be just fine. Uh, you can see this set up here, I've got one of our Raspberry Pi cases, uh, it comes with a built-in fan and I've added a heatsink there and the fan sits uh, just nicely on top of the heatsink and it's got a 5 volt and a, it's 5 volt fan, it's got a positive and a ground wire that can plug straight into the GPIO pins, neat little case, it's one of the best ways to keep your Pi that extra bit cooler uh, for nothing at all. Uh, so passive cooling, you might have heard that thrown around a little bit. And passive cooling refers to, you know, when you're not using any extra energy to cool your Raspberry Pi. So a fan is active cooling because it is consuming electricity to cool your Pi. Whereas a heat sink is just a great big old block of metal designed to draw heat away from the chip. So you'll see quite a lot of heat sinks. We've got a wide range of them on our website. And which one's going to be best? Well, it depends. I've got a couple of smaller ones here. This is an aluminium thinned heat sink and this is a uh, copper uh, heat sink with, uh, you can see it's got little rectangular uh, risers rather than the long fins that this one has here. Uh, and this one again is aluminium but much bigger and has those same fins. Now these heat sinks come with some thermal uh, padding on the back, thermal tape if you will. And that's designed so that when you press it onto the chip, it makes a really, really good contact because the surface of metal isn't perfectly smooth. There's microscopic imperfections and divots and ridges on that that are going to cause it to not make perfect contact with the chip. And as a result, pockets of air get trapped under there and air is a really good insulator, which is going to stop heat being drawn up by that heatsink. Now, even better than that is thermal paste. If you've used computers before, you'll know what thermal paste is. And it is a paste that 
is thermally conductive. Funny about that. Uh, and the best way to use that is, is if it does come with thermal pads, scrub that off with some isopropyl or otherwise, get a nice clean surface and then put some thermal paste, a very thin layer on your heatsink, a very thin layer on the chip and away you go. A thermal, uh, thermal tape works pretty well, but not quite as well as thermal paste, but both much better than just the raw heat sink on top. Be wary though, some heat sinks can have really thick um, adhesive tape, uh, talking a couple of mils thick here, and that's really bad because that tape will act like a complete insulator, and again, stop any heat uh, being drawn up. So that's a bit about cooling. Now there's a bit of a debate when you're using fans about whether you want to push air, so push cool air in onto the heatsink or draw the hot air out. Now normally in a standard cooling case, for example a computer, it will have both. It will have intake fans and exhaust fans to pull cool air in and exhaust hot air out where it's been most generated. Uh, but with the Raspberry Pi, we don't really have the luxury of having all these different fans going on, so we have to choose carefully. Now, I've got this particular fan set up to draw hot air out, and I'm going to explain why. There's a diagram in the tutorial here. And so the idea is, is that the main heatsink will have a really good capacity to absorb uh, or to dissipate most of the heat coming from the chip. Now we want to run, you see the fins there, that's to allow air to brush through the, uh, to rush through the heatsink to cool the heatsink itself down. That's our goal. We've taken care of the chip, now we need to cool the heatsink down so it can further cool the chip down. Now if we're drawing hot air, you'll notice there's room through the board underneath um, for more air to be drawn up, which is really good. So if we're drawing hot air out, it's also going to pull cool air in and cool that heatsink. And with a single fan, especially a small one like this, it's probably gonna be the most efficient way to cool your Pi. However, having a fan drawing hot air, uh, sorry, drawing cool air in, pushing it over the uh, heatsink and then drawing the hot air out on top because hot air rises is going to be the most efficient way to cool your Pi. And that's just a little setup we've got. I've been able to overclock this guy as far as the uh, silicon itself is stable, uh, run stress testing on it and it hasn't overheated. Uh, it's fantastic, fantastic setup. That's how we do it. Now, there is one last thing. If you are very, very serious about cooling your Raspberry Pi, we put this contraption together. Now, what is this, you might ask? It is a Peltier module and it is complete overkill, but it was a lot of fun anyway. Now, what a Peltier module does is a quick overview is it has two plates and uses a very specific construction to create a heat differential when uh, voltage and current uh, is running through it. I'm sorry, when voltage is applied and the current is running through it, I should say, which causes one side to get really, really cold and the other side to get really, really hot. Now, it's got this whopping big heatsink on there because you want to keep the hot side as cool as possible because if the hot side temperature increases, the cold side temperature will increase as well. Now, it's got a fan to uh, draw hot air away from the heatsink. Then we got another 120 mil computer case fan to mount it on top and we can slot a Raspberry Pi in there with the heatsink making contact to that cold side of the Peltier module. It will keep your Pi frosty under the most intense conditions. I couldn't get this Pi above about 35 degrees, which is practically frozen in uh, the realm of computers. It's pretty cool. Complete overkill, but a very fun project if you are interested to see how far you can push your Raspberry Pi. So that's a bit of an overview on cooling. In the next video, we're going to take a look at stress testing and making sure that our cooling system is up to scratch and how we can put our pie through our paces and measure the temperature. So take a look at that. And this is the first part of cooling, stress testing, and overclocking your Raspberry Pi. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to know anything else, get this conversation started in the comments below. That's all for now. Have a great day, guys.